Getting ready to start on the horizontal stabilizer. So the first thing I'm going to do is level this table because I've moved it around the shop. And then after that, I'll clean up the top and paint it white. So I'm just making my way down the plans. I've laid out the, these first four ribs. Now this one on the end, I just want to see what this angle is. And I'll just come to the end of the tube and lay that angle out on the drawing. So I got my protractor here. And it's, well, basically 30 degrees. So a 30 degree angle off that center line. So down here at the end, this is the end of the uh, tube for the uh, ribs. I guess it's the spar. So in this case, this is the center line of the tube. I really want to be out on the edge of the tube where this is going to come off at an angle because we want a nice transition. So I've marked out these two outer lines are just about 7 eighths. And I'm going to put my this parallel to the center line. And then I'm going to mark my 30 degree angle. Which is right there. And I'm just going to extend that out longer than it needs to be. Because when I determine the curve up on the top, that'll determine the length of this rib. And I like to put a, some tick marks to remind me of where the actual rib is going. So the rib is going between these tick marks, not on this side. There we go. I got all the ribs marked out. So I found myself a piece of wood that had a decent grain to it, you know, fairly straight. And I cut about a quarter inch thick by a three quarter inch piece. And I'm going to use that to bend along here and make my curve. Should work pretty good. So I'm going to make this leading edge curve. So basically, this is the front of the plane. This is the end of the tube here at the front of the uh, horizontal stabilizer. And the very first part. It's supposed to be straight for a little bit. And this is going to be the center line of the tube. So I'm going to pin this beginning straight along this line. And then we'll work into the curve. So I've kind of marked out I want it straight till at least there. to do just try it. All right, so now let's start to work it around the ribs. So I've got this bent now in a radius that I'm pretty happy with. One thing I ended up doing was marking out, if you look at the plans, this radius over here that's going to be part of the actual control surface, there's a uh, center point for an arc. And uh, 
To get this end to bend correctly, I needed to bend this around that arc partly so that this would follow nicely. So anyhow, I marked that out and I put some marks out here so that I could bend the end of it um, in, in, in the same smooth flowing arc. So anyhow, it looks good to me now. Smooth and uh, consistent. I can tweak it a little bit here and there. Not much. So now I'm going to draw out this center line. Now I can lay in this spark, this tube, and this tube, and then start working from something solid. So looking at the plans, this front tube is a T13, which is a uh, 7 8 35, right there. And then the T14, which is 7 8 49, is a uh, scarf joint on here on the end. So I'm going to do this first before I bend this tube. It's a little hard to uh, cut a, the angle there, the 30 degree angle, with the saw. So I made a little fixture that just kind of sits over here. It's got some angle iron on here, and I can slide the tube in and clamp it to it and cut that angle. <clears throat> and then I can cut the other uh, angle on the other tube, and I'll have a nice scarf joint. All right, I got these two cut and cleaned up, and to hold them in place, I'm going to put a three-quarter inch tube through here, and then I'll tack them in place and weld it. So I'm just getting started on the horizontal stabilizer, the second one. I've already built one. Got my print on the table. And uh, it's a little marked up because I wrote all over it for the first one. Got my leading edge tube, which I've done the scarf joint and added the piece on the, on the nose, the thicker material. And I'm going to start bending it right here. In order to bend it, I printed some 3D guys. They work pretty good. Um, I think this is an 18 inch radius on, on this part. But I'm going to mount them to the table and start bending it and forming up to the line. So here's my 3D printed die, 7 8 radius, I think uh, this way, and I believe it's an 18 inch radius, and I'm just mounting them on the table. Um, nothing too critical on where it is. I just want them to be right by where I'm working, so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So I just screwed them to the table. It takes quite a bit of force to bend that tube, so I do. I did have to put a backer block on here to uh, just keep it from trying to rip out of the table. So then I've got the hook for the other end to capture the tube. So what I've been working at here is the very beginning here of this tube is straight because we this sits inside a tube to attach to the fuselage. And so I've just been lining that up and then looking down the line and 
you can just see the reveal there of the actual line we want to be on. So it's coming along. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. So just a couple things about bending this. First of all, you want to get the beginning right first. Because once you start to get a bend in here, you can't get a pipe on here to give it more leverage. The other thing is when I'm bending without the pipe, I always put these sticks underneath here. And they just bring the pipe up to the same elevation as the die, so that we don't get any twist in it, right? So I can just slide them right down these sticks on the tabletop and keep it all on the same plane. I don't know how well you can see, but we've got a nice fit to the curve right now. Except for the very end here. And at the very end, I'm actually going to bring this pipe in further than the line. And that's because the next step on, on this tube will be to flatten this end to half inch. And when you flatten it, it's going to do that. So I want it to be on the inside. It's actually a little easier to straighten this back out than it is to bend it. So. Uh, I'm going to bring this very end in here a little extra. Okay, so I've got the curve I want. It matches the line well and it curves in a little extra at the end. But I can't build it flat on the table um, because the ribs are profiled and it would, it, you can't just pin it down. So what I came up with is these blocks. It's no big deal. I just drill a hole and then cut out the extra. And When I line, lined out the hole, I put a match mark. and. Uh, I put these down with the line right on the mark on the table, and then it holds the uh, part off the table. So you only have to do this for this front and the rear tube. So these have already been on this table, so it's so just me a matter of putting them back where they were. I don't have to try to line them up really well or anything like I did the first time. And you can see over here I already have a stop block for the end of the tube. So that's where the tube needs to stop at. Now, if life's good, this will fit in here. Look at that. So it's at least pretty darn close to, this, to the last one I made. So I'll just trim it to length, and then I'll cut and put the lower tube in. So I put the rear tube in the standoffs, and I'm going to cut it to length. And to cut it to length, I just use a square down to my mark on the table. There's my length. And I'll take it over the bandsaw. So this tube, we're going to crimp it this way, so it's only half inch on the end. To do that, one thing I need is a kind of a reference mark so I can get it in the vise correctly. So I put a piece of tape on here, I kind of took my square and uh, had it dragged it along so it made a mark right where the top of the tube was and then I highlighted it with a highlighter. So now I have a reference mark so when I put it in the vise I can hopefully get it pretty square. So this is what I got set up to uh, crimp this end here. I'm using some shims. These are window shims, plastic ones. You could use wood, it wouldn't matter. Anyhow, they're a quarter inch thick at the end. This is seven eighths. Um, I don't want the taper to go past about five inches, which is what I've marked with this tape. And um, there's my reference right line for up. So I've got it as much up as I can figure out. And I'm gonna just bring it down until this end is about half an inch thick. So I haven't obtained my half inch yet. It's at uh, 600,000 ish. So I'm, I put some more shims behind here, which is going to make the angle a little greater. And I'm going to take it down the rest of the way. I've already started to, uh, I had already started to contact back here where I didn't want any taper further down. So that's why I added shim just so that I wouldn't get a crimp mark back here. 
almost there. Yeah, right about perfect. And if it isn't from here, a hammer will fix it up. So now when you do that, squeeze a tube like that, it kind of becomes a figure eight on the end. So to take care of that, I, I made up this little tool. It's just a piece of steel that I rounded the corners on, but it's the right thickness. <clears throat> and it allows me to take a hammer and just clean up that so the end will be flat. And now you can see I have a, a nice profile. With the tube back in the, in the fixture, um, one thing is it's nice and parallel to the table, so that's great. I don't have to screw with that. The other thing is if I come down here to the line and put the uh, square on it, I'm pretty darn close to the center of the tube, and this has a nice curve out here. So over bending it, I was able to go ahead and squeeze this and maintain that arc. So now I don't have to, this really short piece that I needed to bend back in to get the proper fit. So that works well. So I made all my rib forms because the next thing we need to do is make ribs and put them in the fixture. So these I made out of oak and I cut them on a CNC router. Uh, if I was to do this again, I'd probably make them out of MDF. Uh, they only make two ribs each because you only have, um, they're all different sizes. So one right and one left of each size is all you're going to have on them. That steel is uh, not that hard to bend. So I would be tempted to try to just make them out of MDF, be easier and cheaper. So one thing to keep in mind, this is my layout. This is the uh, tube for the trim tab. So you'll have a couple bushings in these ribs. So when I made my ribs, you know, I theoretically laid out all the holes for the light weighting, and I had a hole there. So you just want to watch and see, you know, Make sure you leave enough meat there to be able to put that bushing in. And all I did was I plugged it with a dowel so that I wouldn't do something stupid and drill it out and uh, have a hole that's interfering with where I really want the hole and something that would be difficult to weld around. Same thing on the nose. After I finished, I decided that that was way too close to the end. It was not going to be uh, worth it because it would make it harder to weld down here. So anyhow, I just plugged those up. Got my metal back and my forms. So all I'm going to do now is drill, drill the nose hole and the tail hole so that I can sandwich the uh, blank between the two forms and then mark out the uh, reveal we need for the flange. Holes are quarter inch. So now, with it bolted between there, I'm going to take a washer. So we want a 7 16 flange. We need a little extra for the radius on the bend. 7 16 is 4375. I got a washer here that's 400. Plus the marker, I'll get a line that's a pretty good reference line out where I need to keep my flange. So you just take the washer and stick it in there. Roll it down the edge. We'll measure to see what it really came out at. So now I can cut, cut off this material at that line. 
Like I said, I'll measure it when I get it out of the mold to see exactly where I want to be on the outside of the line probably. So there's my blank trimmed to rough size and deburred. So now it's ready to go in the forms and get beat into a rib. Alright, I'm going to start forming this rib. So I just clamp, clamp the form in a vise and just slowly work it over. Start with my dead blow. And I kind of like to work from both ends. Uh, theoretically, it makes the metal go towards the center. Taking it over maybe uh, just shy of 45 degrees. Trying very poorly to hit right where the material comes out of the form. I'm going to flip it over. I don't want this to all try to go one direction. I want to get it locked around the form. So I'm going to do a little bit on each side at the beginning. All right, so that's the first pass. Now I'm going to go ahead and take it over a lot further. Again, I'm trying to get very close to the bottom of the form. Okay, so it's had two passes on both sides. It's most of the way over. So now what I'm going to do is take it all the way down flat with the dead blow. It won't come out. It won't come out perfectly flat with this, just as far as it'll go. And I'm trying to hit right here on this edge where the two forms meet. All right, that's it for the dead blow. So now I'm going to start working it over with a ball peen hammer. And I'm going to start. I have two of them. I have a big old one and a much smaller one. I'm going to start with the smaller one. Uh, because uh, I'm not trying to finish this off. I'm trying to just bring down it's if you look your scallops It's rippled I'm gonna start working right here on this edge And what I'm looking for is right down this edge You'll see it turn shiny and it looks uh, pretty much straight and a little more crisp right now It looks very rounded and has a radius All right, so if you, I don't know how well you can see it. I'm going to try to pick it up with the camera. You can see how this is kind of rounded here. See how it's now, now it's becoming straight, and you also get a shiny mark where you've been doing all your hitting. So now that I'm hammering down and starting to put a little more force into it, I'll put a backer block underneath the vise just so that it doesn't try to move down in the vise when it's hit. That's pretty good with that hammer. So now I'm going to move on to the large hammer. So basically what I'm doing now is this is, uh, this is a little lumpy out here, the flat part. The small hammer, we got this corner to be pretty crisp. So now what I want to try to do is iron this out so that this face is flatter. And I've got a much bigger surface to do that with. Not entirely sure the camera's catching this, but if you look, there's actually a little gap in various places uh, between the form and the, the uh, rib. And so it's just a little scalloping out on the very outside edge. And so all I do for my final thing is take my small hammer and it just pops out. No, they don't pop out. Pry them out. There's the rib. Now it's going to have some serious bow to it. 
Eh, not too bad. These don't actually require a ton of fluting, but um, I'm not going to worry about straightening it until I put all the light weighting holes in and done everything I can to tweak it out of shape, and then I'll straighten it. Set my combination square to give me a line at uh, well seven sixteenths for my print, which is uh, four three two five. So that's pretty good right there if I sand to the top of the line. And then I just mark it all the way down. And I'll take that over the belt sander and get rid of the excess material. So it's last chance to check every rib and make sure you're not putting a light reading hole where you need some material like where the flap drive or the uh, trim drive is for the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Now before I start drilling these, I'm going to take and I've set my combination square up to 5 sixteenths of an inch. And I'm going to draw a line around the perimeter here on both sides. And I'm going to use step drills to drill out the uh, light weighting hole and that just tells me when I've reached the maximum amount of material I can remove. The plans call for 5 sixteenths to be left on the edge. Okay, so now I've uh, drilled these. I can take it out of the oak form. And what I'm going to do is put it in. I made some extra softwood forms. They don't have any holes in them. Just the profile. So that we can put the rib on there. Got one already done here. And uh, drill the rest of the holes and open up the lightweighting holes. So this gives me something to hold it by, not bend it up and tweak it and uh, support the holes when you're drilling them so we don't make a huge burr. So anyhow, now it's going to be opening it up with step drills. This step drill went up to one inch, so ribs like this one are done. I was able to do every single hole. The larger ones need a larger hole, so I've moved up to this step drill. Taking the rib out of the form, there's a pretty good burr on the back side of these stepped holes. But the step drill will deburr those really nicely if you're just careful. Um, the fillet for the next size uh, has a nice uh, angle to it. So now that all these ribs have their light wing holes and they're deburred, flanges are the right size, I'm going to straighten them. So they've got a little bow to them, not real bad. So I'm just going to start straightening them off before I fit them to the, to the actual uh, tubes of the horizontal stabilizer. I'm just fluting. These don't need that much.
Now I'm just going to nip off some of this extra material down the end. So the hole represents the center of the uh, trailing edge tube. So I'm just going to get rid of most of this. Okay, taking the ribs to the front and rear tubes of the stabilizer. So I've done this end one. I have some blocks here to uh, hold them vertical. And they are justified to the lines below so that uh, it will be holding it in the right position. So this one's done. And it fits pretty well. So I'm going to start working on this one right here. Now what I do is I take a piece of scrap tubing. So this is a piece of 7 eighths. And these holes on my forms are exactly tube centers. So I'll do the nose first. And the first thing I'm going to do is just mark out, center this up over the right to left on the form and over the hole or pretty close. And just mark out where that 7 8 tube theoretically would be. That's good enough to get started. All right, so now I'm going to take a grinder and remove everything that doesn't look like that arc. So I just check fit with this scrap and see where I need to remove and how close up. All right, so the nose works on that. It'll, this, these blocks give me position, so it's real easy to come back to the same spot. Um, so now I can start working on the rear. While I'm here, since this one's already done, I can go ahead and lock it in place. There you go, I got all the ribs in. They've all been fitted. So now I'll work on this, uh, there's a half inch diagonal member there. And then there's some small support members for this rib. So I'm working on this half inch cross brace that goes in here now. So I didn't worry too much about where the holes were gonna end up. I figured I'd just remove material if something was in the way. So that hole's fine. Down here we land right between a brace. So I'm just going to cut out between those two poles. So with that missing now, I can fit this. All right, so now I have the tube pretty close to the right length. All right, to fit this tube to here, I'm going to measure the angle. And then I'm just going to do it with an end mill in the mill. So one problem I've always had doing this is I can set up the one end, set up the angle in the mill and cut it. But then when you go to do the other end, it ends up in a twist or something. So I've got these blocks I've made. They just clamp around the tube and just set it down on a flat surface and lock them down. I can now put this end in the mill, do this tube, turn around, do this tube, and it'll be on the exact same Access it won't have twisted. All right, I'm just going to match the angle on this protractor and clamp it down. So there's that tube that fits in there really nice. So now I'll just do the other end. So the cross tube looks really good there. So all I got to do now is get this guy braced up and I can start tacking it together.
So right here, I've drawn for the plans where the trim drive goes. And so I'm just going to take a square, and I've already transferred the line up onto each rib, this rib and this one down here. Now I can just find center on the rib and I will uh, cut the hole for the bushing. Now a smarter person would have done this before they welded these in. But I forgot. No big deal. They'll come out just fine. Alright, so I got my bushings and I drilled the holes. But I need this guy to sit parallel to the line and because this rib's at an angle, I just got to open it up a little. And that's plenty close enough. I'm not actually going to weld these. I'm going to take the other stabilizer I've already made and set them both together, run the, run the drive through both sets of bushings, and once I get things lined up, I will weld these. So I brought in here the first stabilizer I made, and just to see where these bars ended up, so I can mark it on here. Um, I deviate a little from the plans. If you start looking at the kits that are coming out, you, YouTube, you can watch and see all kinds of different kits that have uh, uh, people are working on. There's been a lot of changes on the horizontal stabilizer, and these are one of them. And looking at what it's doing and what made the most sense, the plans I have show a single bar here and a single bar to here. I don't think it's to re reinforce this guy because the loads on this are all perpendicular. So or in line with the rib. So anyhow, it's mostly got to be so that this rib during fabric covering and shrinking doesn't bend. And I like the idea of the two rods because it keeps it from twisting also. So anyhow, I'm going to do the exact same thing here is just do two rods pretty close to the center and back over here to the cross support. And I've marked it so now I know where they're going. Small gun tack welding this side. I'm going to pull it out of the fixture and tack it. So I finished welding this, this guy. I put him back in the jig and he fits well and he's flat, so that's great. So what I'm going to do now is put, there's four or three bushings that go in this. Um, one up here for tail wires and two back here for the hinges. So I'm going to drill and weld those bushings in. So first thing I'm going to do is I've laid those marks out on the template. I'm just going to transfer it from, from the table up to the tubes where they go. Okay, to drill these tubes I'm using a V-block that I 3D printed. So it's just a 45 degree angle block that's square and it has a groove in the bottom. And all you do is set it in the vise and then line your drill bit up on the center here. And then when you lay your tube in there it will self-center and you can drill and you'll end up in the center of the tube every time. Anyhow, easy to, easy to make and makes your life so much easier. So I've jury rigged this to flat and level so that I can start drilling these holes. And uh, I am starting with a center drill because a drill bit's going to want to wander around a little bit. Oh, one final step on these before they'll be pretty much complete is to weld these bushings in. So I've, I cut all these bushings. They're all a little long. I'll weld them in and then I'll file and grind them down to the proper height. All right, I set this up so that I can put the trim drive bushings on this other horizontal stabilizer. The one's welded in, the other one isn't. So I drew a line down the table, put some blocks that I could clamp to to get the rear spars parallel. Also put a little tube between them to hold them together. So now what I'm going to do 
is bring this rod over and fit these holes so that the bushings, the trim drive, will be in line with each other on, on both sides. And as I get them fitted, then I'll tack them in place and weld them. So now all these bushings are tacked in place, well in this one. And it moves and fits the wall of them. So I can take this all apart and final weld those. And that'll be the end of the welding on this. So what I'm doing now is taking these bushings down to the correct height. And then I'm going to go on to something else and put these away for a while.